In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to create a beautiful sales funnel. I'll break it down step by step. So if you are a beginner, this is for you. And we will create this simple funnel. It starts by capturing your audience's interest with an opt-in form, allowing you to get their email address. Once you have their contact, I'll show you how you can create a sales email sequence to nurture those leads. Then you're able to send people to a persuasive sales page that leaves them eager to make a purchase. This is your chance to convince them that your offer adds value to their lives. Finally, we'll wrap it up with a seamless checkout experience that ensures a smooth transaction. It sounds like a lot of steps, but actually all we need for this to work is one tool and it's called Flowdesk, which is also the sponsor of this video. But I've been recommending them already for the past two years or so, much before they reached out to me to do this video. I honestly think they have the most beautiful email templates and it's one of the easiest tools to use. So it's perfect for beginners. <laughs> Hello internet people, my name is Robert and to get started, head to the description of this video and click on the first link and you land on this page where you can sign up with Flowdesk. And don't worry, they offer a free trial so you can try before you commit to anything. But if you use my link and you like this tool after the free trial, you will get a 50% discount for the first year. Or if you already have signed up for the free trial, just use my coupon code tips with punch. That's all together and all in capital letters and you will get the same discount. You can add it here on the payment page by clicking on this little link here. And let's just sign up and uh, just enter your email address and obviously your password and hit on the create account button. Now you can see that we need to confirm the email address. I'm just going to go to my email box and here it is. You can see I can just click on the verify. It takes you to this page. It's not really clear that it worked, but you should be able to log in now. Just use your email and password you, th that you just signed up with. Next, Flowdesk will ask you to create your first email, but we will skip this welcome flow because it might change later. So just click on the logo here at the top and now you are in the dashboard of Flowdesk. This is where all the magic happens. Okay, let's start from the top of the funnel. So we need a page where we can collect visitors email address. The most common way to get people to join your newsletter and give their email address is to offer something like a free guide, a checklist or a template. It doesn't really matter what, as long as it is digital and people will find it valuable enough to give their email for exchange for the freebie. In the email marketing world, this is called lead magnet. So we're here now in the dashboard of Flowdesk and from here you can control everything that ha happens in this tool. First of all, we need to go into the forms because in the email section, you can just send out one-time emails. We're not going to do that today, but we need to create a form first of all. Let's click on forms and then click on new form. So it's asking us here, choose the form type. You have three options. You have pop-up, inline, and full page. Pop-up and inline goes on a website. So if you have a website, use one of these. And then full page is best if you don't have a website, but you want to have a kind of a landing page, you can use this. To set this up, uh, they're almost identical. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use inline. So let's click on inline and see what kind of uh, templates they have. So I have this one. So there's a few of these. So let's say I like this one. I want to have an image and also some text here. So I'm going to click and customize this. Since we're new to Flowdesk, we need to first create a segment. I'm going to call it about me just because I'm going to place this uh, form on about me page. So I'm going to call that way about me and save. This is the Flowdesk editor and it's quite easy to use. If you click on the image, for example, it opens up this uh, menu here and now you can uh, start updating. So if we upload an image and from here I can upload an image, let's say I'm going to, let's say I'm going to upload this one and you see it fits quite nicely, but I don't like this black color. So I'm, so I'm just going to click on this background of this form and then I'm able to select the background. So let's say just something softer, maybe like this. The rest, I kind of like it. And what we can do is also uh, update the styling. You see that you have two kind of colors here if you want or something like this. But I like to keep it solid, so I'll keep it this way. But now you can't really see the text. So let's click on the text. From here, I can select the color. So let's change that first. And then as well, you can change fonts. So for example, I can change the poppins. You can change the alignment here. Right now it's too big, so I need to adjust it slightly. And actually my text will be different. So if I click on the text, 
now I can just select it, delete it all, and now I could type in uh, get your book. If I select the text, there's a few other options here, but right now I don't need that. I'm just going to reduce the text size a little bit until it's on one line like that. Nice. Let's uh, update the color of this text just because it's really hard to see I like this. And then we have the form field itself. So right now we have first name and an email address. Here you see there's more options. So for example, I can make the first name required field. And if I need to add a new field, I can click on add. And for example, here, last name, and you see it's been added, last name. If I want to change the positions, I just uh, click on these six dots and drag it wherever I want it to appear. So now you see it's also here. But actually, I don't want the uh, last name. I don't think it's needed. So I'm just going to keep it to email and first name. From here, I can also update the font of the fields and also the style of the field. So if I want to add a bit of rounded corners like this, it's possible from here. And the field color is basically this one. But the white one works fine for me. Now, if I there's even a button here. It's a bit hard to see, but I need to change that color. And let's pick some darker color. So maybe something like this. Oh, I just changed the border. So you can see I can only change the border here. But if you click on this one, you can see that there's now solid color behind it. It's just the type of a button this is. So I'm going to change the button the, to round the corners. And now I can come here and update also the color of the button. I forgot which, which brown this was, but <laughs> let's say it's this one. The form field is starting to look quite nice. Just so you know, if you click on this background, you have a few more options. We already kind of went through some, but I forgot to mention about this message. So if I click on the message from here, you can select what type of message you're going to see once you subscribe. So from here, this text, you can select it. Oops, now it went away. I can click on friendly and it will update it. Or you can just customize it yourself. From here, you can type in whatever you want. I'm going to keep it to the friendly one. At any point, if you've done any mistakes, just click here on undo and it will go back and obviously redo if you need to redo it. And then here you can select the mobile preview. From here, you can see how this form will also behave on mobile. You want to check this. Usually it will work perfectly, but maybe sometimes your text is too long or something. So you would need to adjust that. So let's go back to editing. But it's really important to check the mobile view just because most traffic is on mobile anyway. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this form, so I can now proceed. If I click on next here, Flowdesk will ask me a few questions. So should we enable double opt-in? If you're new to this, just keep it to no. And then when subscribers opt into this form, notify me. So they're going to send an email to you or do not notify. I don't want it because it just gets uh, very overwhelming quite quickly. So I'm going to continue. And after this form is submitted, display success message. That's what we just uh, picked. But you could also redirect people to a certain uh, web page. And now you need to place this code. Now it looks really scary, but actually it's pretty simple. And I have here my WordPress website and I'm using Elementor as my page builder, but this should work on any page builder. Wix or Squarespace, they all have something like this. So from the search, I'm going to just look for HTML and I'm going to drag this one wherever I want the form to show up. And this should work on pretty much all of the page builders. They have some sort of HTML code block. Right now, I have this uh, empty code block. So I just go back, copy the first code. I place it in here. Then I just need to create a bit of space. So I go at the end of this and then hit on enter a few times. And then I go back and copy the rest of the code. Place it in here. And you see that it appears. Okay, great. That's, that's really good. Now I can just click on preview this page. And in the preview, if you start scrolling, you see that the form appears. It's in line form, so it appears in line. <laughs> now I can just enter my first name and the ad, uh, email address and send me the code. Okay, I didn't update the button text, but you can see here that you get this message. That's what we uh, chose before. And now if I go back to Flowdesk, and from here, I just scroll up and click on this Flowdesk logo. You see we have the form here. And if we go to audiences, 
you notice you have your first subscriber which is you not very impressive but it is there and you have this segment here if you're enjoying this video so far then give it a like so i know you enjoyed this type of videos great we have the email now and permission to contact the person so we can now set up an automatic email sequence which is called workflow in flowdesk workflows are one of the most powerful features of flowdesk because they allow you to automate your email based on the certain triggers or user actions let me show you how it works so let's click on workflows and right now we don't have any so let's click on new workflow and you could now choose here one of the four options or you can start from scratch i'm going to just click on start from scratch i'm going to give it the name sales funnel and then click on save workflows are amazing and you'll see in a second why so first of all we need to select the trigger so add a trigger from here we can see see begin this workflow when a subscriber added to a segment in this case we only have one segment about me so i'm going to select it so when this is when this trigger happens then we can start doing stuff right now there's nothing so if we click on this little plus icon we can now choose okay if somebody signs up we can send for example an email from here we can create a new email we don't have any emails now you have like a dozen of different options depending on what you need uh, from here let's say i want to say just thanks and from here you can see that there's a few options even for this one and they just look so i don't know they're just somehow so fresh so i'm going to select this one i think it kind of conveys what i want to say <laughs> and then i click on customize now the editor works the same way if i click anywhere here you can see that i have the global styles i click on this element i can update it if i need to uh, from here you have more options so same way that the inline form also works the only thing is here you can also delete things so for example when i click on this element i could now no actually let's delete this logo element so i'm going to just delete this one because i don't need it and from here you could start deleting and adding new sections that you need so wherever you need a new section you click on this one and you get lots of different options so for example if i just want to have a button here it adds it there now, what we could do is this is an email that we send out and we thank the person for signing up to the form and they can also download uh, some freebie. Let's say it's a book in this case. Let's click on this button. And now here you have link. From here, you can link to any web page, but also you could just attach a file. So we're gonna do that. Let's upload a file. And in this case, it's YouTube secrets uh, guide, which I've created and now i can open it and it's uploading it so this what does it mean whenever somebody clicks on this button they can just download that book to create a lead magnet you can use free tools like canva.com to design an infographic or a pdf file or even google docs to create checklists and cheat sheets it doesn't need to be anything fancy as long as it provides value and it's quick to consume all right so let me take a few minutes and I'll update this uh, email so that it looks a bit nicer, but the updating works exactly the same way as in the form. Okay, so I've, uh, I've updated this slightly, added an image and also new text, and here we have the button. So what I wanna show here, if you click on this one and then you have, and here you have the text, if I click on it, you can start, let me select everything, you can start typing, so hello. And now if you press on add sign, you can choose to personalize email. So for example, we can choose first name. And then if, uh, if the first name is not available, what do we uh, show? For example, let's say, hello, doc. So in this case, it will just show hello, Robert or hello, doc. So in this case, it doesn't know the first name. This way you can personalize the email. And now I could just type in here, something like this. And now if they click on this button, I can update the text. And now obviously if they click on this button, they can download the file. So once we're finished with this, let's click on finish. And you can see that we have now this trigger. And once that is triggered, you send the email. Now what we could do is click on this little icon here and add a little time delay. So let's say in two days, so if I can select this from here, a certain time period, 
and let's say two days, we can send our first sales email. So from here, I would add another email. So just selecting one of these, they're not really on topic. I'm not going to update them. So let's select this one. Yes, looks good. I would just update this email and then I would start selling my products. So from here, let's say I want to add another delay. So one day, two days, and let's add another email. So from here, I could choose that. You can see that you can start building up this uh, email sequence and you really can start introducing your product yourself and then slowly start selling the product. And then if you want to get a bit more uh, advanced, you can also use conditions and then actions. But that's uh, for another tutorial, but it's really useful features. All right, so we have this super, super simple uh, email sequence. And once we're ready, let's publish it. And let's click again, publish now. And now we have our first workflow. Great. So now if somebody signs up to that form, they will get these emails after, well, first email immediately, and then the second email after two days. We have now a way to collect the email address and send automatic emails. Now it's time to go for the sale. Let's head to the checkout menu in Flowdesk. This is where you can set up sales pages and the checkout itself. In Flowdesk, the sales page and product is all done in one page. So you can have one main product and one upsell for each checkout page. So here you have checkouts and notice it's still in beta because it's quite new feature from Flowdesk. So if I click on that, you can again choose a few templates. So I'm going to just click here on digital product and let's see what are the options here. I'm going to choose this one. Let's see how it looks like in the preview because I can see more of it. All right. So this is what you get. There's a few blocks. And the good thing is you can adjust these blocks. You don't need to uh, have all of these. So this looks good to me. I could now start updating this uh, sales page. So let's say let's upload an image. This might be a bit too small image, but maybe it'll work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I guess it works. It's a bit blurry, but for this tutorial, it should be fine. Again, works exactly the same way as with uh, forms and also emails. Uh, just update things here. And what's uh, maybe different here is that you can move these uh, blocks. So for example, if I want this lower, I can click on this and now you see it moved down. But actually this one is probably the most interesting one here. Now, if you're wondering what is this, what is these uh, lines? You can always just click on this element. And if you click on block, you can cl you click on this device mockup and you won't see it anymore. And you can flip the uh, positions of this. So let's say I want the image on the right or actually on the left, then that's how it shows up here. And we can also adjust the backgrounds, obviously, and the paddings. So right now, for example, let's see what it does. You see it adds a bit of space there. Don't need it right now. I think it's, it's fine how it was. From here, you can edit the block. So this is basically the, what you see. It's the same one. You can duplicate it and move them around like we already saw and obviously delete it. Then if you scroll a little bit and you see this add block, if you click on it, you can add new blocks there. So let's say I want to have, I don't know, some text. So from here, I'll just add this one and it appears here. And again, if I click on it, it has all its own settings and also the block settings are here. So for example, right now there's no background. I could add it now and you see it turns blue. And then if you want people to link to the checkout page, you just click on any of the buttons and you can see that they link automatically to the checkout. So if you add a button somewhere, that's going to take the user directly to the checkout page. And so I would now spend a bit of time and create this sales page, add images, add the product image as well, and maybe something about pricing. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it super simple, very quick. Next step would be to go and create a checkout. Now we don't have a product yet, so let's start with the product and you can see from here, you can click edit products. So if I click on this, you'll be able to add the product. So from here, let's adjust the price and uh, we can upload an image for this one. I'm just going to use the ones I have. The image doesn't fit right now, but if I just drag from here, I can also adjust the positioning of the image. So like this, at least you can see my face. 
Then you can update the name and obviously the description. You would just add it from here. And uh, I also skip this. You can set on sale. For example, if it is on sale, we can say like 19. So then you, it adds a little uh, red mark here, which is really nice. And then you can also make this whole product free. Obviously, that will just remove the price. And that's how simple it is to set up the product. Then you have upsell. So you can upsell uh, other products if you want to do it here. But I don't think I'll need it. So I'm not going to spend time on it. But it works exactly the same way as a product. Then uh, let's uh, select from here. If somebody purchases this, this is the contact details you're asking them. So first name, last name, and email address. In most cases, that's more than enough, but you could also disable so some of these from here. So for example, if you don't want last name, you can disable it. From here, you can also control if you want the people to sign up to your newsletter. But since they already signed up to our newsletter, that's how they kind of found out about this offer. Uh, I'm gonna disable this later, but this is where you would update all those things. Let's go to testimonials. And this is uh, just something if you want to add, I'm going to show you where it appears in a second. These are the settings here. And if you have any discounts, you would create from here. So let's go and close this pop up. And now you see I have the product here. Right now I have this logo, but I don't like it. I don't want to have any logo here. If I click anywhere on the background here, this appears and I can start disabling things. So here I have the upsell. No, I don't want it. Also the logo, I don't want it, so I'm going to disable it. Email opt-in, again, don't want it, so disabling it. You have discount codes. Yeah, sure, I can keep that for now. Testimonials, this is where it would appear. Again, just going to disable it. And terms and conditions, this is where you would see them. So this is the checkout page, and you have your product. And now let's take a look at delivery. And this is like kind of the thank you page. So once they purchase something, this is what they would see. Right now, there's a lot of stuff. So what I would do is just click here and you start having the same options again. I think I can just do, yeah start uh, disabling this because I don't think I need half of these. I just want to have the instructions here. Actually, not even instructions. I'm going to just like this. Uh, my product doesn't need it. From here, you can edit the image, upload something if you want to and edit the thank you page as well. To actually receive payments, you need to connect Flowdesk to Stripe, which is a very popular payment provider used by probably millions of websites. But to connect, you need to create an account with Stripe. Let me show you how, because you do it through Flowdesk. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this, although this would need a bit of work, a bit of changing colors and stuff like that. I can click on publish, but there's a small, thing we haven't done and that's setting up the payment provider which is uh, stripe in this case so from here if you click on connect with stripe this is the flow to connect flowdesk to stripe and we are already in stripe so everything you do here is to uh, is for uh, stripe not flowdesk so from here it's asking for the email let's continue and now if you have an account like I do, you get this verification code. If you don't have, then you would need to uh, set up the Stripe account. Now, just fill in all the details they ask. It's a bit tedious process because you need to add some uh, business details. And if you don't have a business, you'll have to be like a personal, uh, just personal information. And then you need to confirm your identity, maybe depending on your country. So there's a few steps, but it's definitely worth it because this is how you get paid. So once you're done with that, all your details are here and then just agree and submit. And you probably go back to this page and you'll see that your Stripe verification is still pending. This might take a few minutes. If everything checks out, it should work. But until then, what I want to show you quickly is if you go to Flowdesk and from here, if you hover over this and you have this branding section and from here, you can set up a logo, your brand colors and brand fonts which makes it easier for you to stay on brand and always use the same fonts and colors in any of the features that Flowdesk offers. And then when you need to check, you can go to checkout the setup and see if Stripe is connected. So now it is connected. I go back to checkout. And now you can see that the publish button is black. If I click on publish, you can now copy this URL and let's open up a new tab. And this is basically your URL. And you can see this is my sales page. 
So if I click on this buy now button here, you can see that now you have also this, this uh, checkout. From here, you can see that I add my details and credit card number, and then I can pay for this product. Okay, great. You know the basics of how to set up a simple sales funnel, but to get most of a flow desk, because this video was just a very quick overview, check out this video for an in-depth tutorial where I'll show you all the technical aspects of Flowdesk and for example, how to set up your custom domain name.